let's learn how to graph motion. Now, motion is something we all do, but scientifically describing it is a little bit tricky sometimes. So position is how scientists describe your location. All of us have a position all the time. Motion, very simply, is described as a change in position. That's what triangle means in science change. So change in position, and this happens in time. Time is always marching forward, so everything we do can be compared to time. And sometimes we'll write this as a change in position over time. We're gonna get to how that all works out uh, with our, our next little video about calculating um, our speed of our motion. So whenever we graph something, uh, we must remember that graphs, like all animals except for humans, have tails. They need to have their tails. And this is a really easy way to remember not only what to look for in a graph, but how to make it. So we have a graph here with a y and an x axis. And then we also call the point that the y and the x intercept each other the origin. Granted, this is only one of the quadrants. There's actually four, but we usually live in, in the realm of positive um, in science class. So... The title here, we're gonna have position versus time, so that way we know what we're talking about. A stands for axis, and that's our axis labels. So we need time on the bottom, because time is always marching on, and then position on our y-axis. Origin here is where they both are at zero, and for a position time graph, that's our starting point. The point that we haven't really gone anywhere yet, and we haven't started calculating or counting our time. Increments are how we break things apart. Now, a lot of people like to try to count them out. I always learned if you start with what you need your biggest to be, divide it in half, divide that in half, and divide the other parts in half, then your axis looks nicer. So here, if we go 0 to 20, 10 is in the middle, 5 is in the middle of that, 15 is in the middle of that. That way, your graph looks a lot nicer. It's an easy way to look at how your increments work out. And then for your labels, that's what we put on lines to show like what those things mean. So like if we're compar comparing John and Jill, then we can label those things. So remember, you always need to have your tail, title, axis, increments, and labels. That way people know what the heck they're looking at when you make a graph. And when you look at graphs that are missing these things, it's usually really hard to understand what that graph is even trying to get across. So make sure that your graphs make sense to other people and to your teacher. Okay, so then let's look at how to actually make a position time graph. Um, we're going to start out with just a really basic story about um, a guy named Jack. So Jack is going to walk to the store. He's going to start at some starting place where we haven't counted but position or time, and he's going to move away from his starting point, and time is going to count on. So we always have to move forward in time. So here this shows us that we're moving away from our starting point. He walks to the store. Number two, he buys a Slurpee. Now while he's at the store, he's not moving any closer to or farther away from his starting point. So his position is going to stay the same. But time keeps marching on. Time always marches on. So here he buys a Slurpee. And then for segment number three, he is going to go back home. It's a very simple trip that Jack took today. He just needs some Slurpee. Now we're going to draw a line back to our starting point because his position is returning back to where he started. But time keeps marching on. So it has to move over to the right, always over to the right. So on any position time graph, a line that moves up is gonna be away from the start. A flat line tells us we're not moving because our position isn't changing. And then a downward sloping line is going to be back to the start. In math, we call this positive slope because both values are increasing position and time are increasing. No slope because position is staying the same even though time marches on. And negative slope because our position is decreasing in value. Okay, so positive, no slope, negative slope, and then our basic motions on a distance time graph. There's more that can go on, but we're gonna start simple. Now, here is another little uh, thing. Jill is going to walk to the store and Jack is going to run to the store. What will their lines look like? Well, a walk is going to take more time to cover 
certain distances. It's going to have a low slope because it's a slow motion. Okay, she's covering very little distance in each period of time. Compared to Jack, if he runs, he is going to have a much steeper slope because he's covering more distance in a certain number of time. And if we look here at our little line, let's call that 10 meters or something. Um, it took Jack just a little bit of time to cover that distance, say five seconds, whereas it took Jill much longer, like 20 seconds to cover that time. So we know she's going slower based on how the values of our distance and time work out. So let's look at one more little story. Gina is going to walk two miles in 30 minutes to AMC. She's going to go watch a movie. She watches a movie for two hours and then she realizes that she's going to be late home and she doesn't want to get in trouble. So she runs home that same two miles in 30 minutes. So we're going to get our little graphy poo set up here. We got position on one side, time on the other. But you know what? Um, we're not measuring position in meters we're measuring it in miles so we need to make sure that looks right and she's going to go two miles and our time is in minutes too um so if we're going two hours 30 minutes 15 minutes we'll say like three is a good way to measure that guy out and then two one and then that two will split into half so we have one and two miles okay so she's going to walk two miles in 30 minutes so 30 minutes is halfway between um you know zero and one and there's our little line that shows that she went 30 miles in two minutes. She's going to watch a two-hour movie, so she's going to stay at the two-mile mark because that's where the AMC is for two hours. That'll take us to two and a half hours. And she needs to run home in 15 minutes. So that's going to be at 245-minute mark. And notice how steep that slope is because it's showing that she has to go really fast to get that two miles covered in 15 minutes. She is running that is the basis of how the basics of how we're going to be doing our graphs. We're going to do a ton more practice in class. Um, and now you know basically how to make your own stories with graphs and then uh, write a graph from a story. Enjoy.